Hello, dear friend. Thomas Matthew IV here coming to you with a very heavy word from the Lord. The Lord spoke to me uh, on Sunday night very strongly, Saturday night, very strongly about um, the spirit of holiness, holiness unto the Lord. And yesterday I was pondering on this too. You know, my, my days and hours all go together. They seem to all go into one big package in a blur. Sometimes I can't remember <laughs> which day it was, which what time of day. I'm tossing all the time uh, in the spirit. I'm always switched on listening to God all the time. It's a quite a laborious life, uh, but it's great. What a privilege it is that God speaks to me and speaks to us. I mean, I mean, you just can't go wrong with having heaven talking to you all the time. Um... But this is a message I need to bring to the body of Christ because we're living in a very crucial hour. And I heard this word, I want to say it right from the beginning. It's going to sound a bit rude, but get ready for the prophet here. The Lord said to me, I mean, I heard this in my spirit. You think he could talk like that? He can. Very clearly I heard, he said, tell people they can't be living their carnal life and expect me in heaven to bless them abundantly. I said it in a nice way. I had a few other embellishing adjectives on it uh, when I heard it, but I don't want to say that. Uh, really, maybe I might. But the Lord is, is serious about um, who He's going to bless. You know, we, we see the greats of the Spirit. I was watching A.A. A. Allen yesterday, and man, I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost phew, touched me in a way. I tell you, it was amazing to see the miracles. He had to plow a field and pay a price. Amy Simple McPherson and uh, Catherine Coleman and John G. Lake and Smith Wigglesworth and these guys that we hear about, Kenneth Hagin, Oral Roberts, you know, and the, the ministries that were so great. We hear, we hear about them and uh, read about them and see the exploits that they did. did you, and do you think they just did it by chance? No. They pressed into God. Uh, John G. Lake had such a revelation that he went so far as to say, if sin is an affront to Jesus, so is sickness. You shouldn't have any. Ooh, Lord. And I don't want to recap what I said in the first volume of this. Holiness unto the Lord, the spirit of holiness, the life of holiness. I'll just say, say it like that. The, the Lord is serious about pouring out his fire, but he needs to do it on a clean vessel. It doesn't mean that you're doing anything in your own strength, but you do need to fast. So I heard the Lord say, tell people they can't make it in their carnal nature uh, ha ha to have a big, spiritual, powerful life. And, and the next thing is we need to fast, but not just fast food, fast things that disturb you, distract you, the foxes that so, the little foxes that spoil the vine, the, the, those things that disturb your walk with God. Fast from it. You don't need everything you think you need. You know, like the body has needs, the mind has needs, the relationship realm has needs, the, you know, come on. You don't need all the that you think you need. You need God. You got to depend. You got to, you got to depend on Him, and you got to decide what you want. And the Lord said to me also uh, that some blessings don't come to a messed up life. You know, you you need to decide to uh, to really straighten yourself out. This is a word to the church. I'm telling you, I'm I'm on a I'm in the governmental realm of the office here of the prophet speaking to the body of Christ. I mean, these, these are things that need to be said. A lot of people don't. One of my dearest uh, partners and uh, members of our ministry, uh, real woman of God, serious lady, switched on, spiritual, you know, serious-minded person. She said, oh my God, a lot of people don't want to talk about this uh, from the first volume I did on this because it might step on a lot of toes. I said, well, so what? I wrote her back and I said, uh, I don't care. I'm going to do what God wants because I know what it takes. See, I'm telling you what it takes. You want to have a powerful, anointed life? 
It needs to be a clean and integritous life. It needs to be a, a serious life. It needs to be a holy life. You can't just... And there's some people that just think, you know, they manage themselves to get away with so many things that they do. And they still, they're still alive and they're still like in... Uh, but uh, but you, you, you keep trying that. You keep trying to play with God and uh, see who's going to win. His word or you? His word is going to always win. You ever hear those messages that, uh, well, we don't hear them much anymore, but I've been listening to a lot of that, things like that. And I've, been, and I've been hearing God tell me in his own visitations to me about these things, about things that challenge you, challenge your holiness. Those things that you go, oh my God, you know, you don't want to hear. You know, like the scripture even says in the latter times, there'll be people that just want to hear. They have itching ears to hear what they want to hear. They don't want to hear truth. And a lot of people have made these comments about, you know, nobody wants to hear this me preaching against sin or against, you know, about hellfire and brimstone and all that. Well, we need to hear it. Because what, what's your choice in the end? You're going to go up or down, one, one place or the other. And you can't let God's grace run out on you. So here, here's what I'm doing. I've lost a lot of weight. Um, the way this camera is angling at me, I'm not going to show you down here. But if I start to hit here, you can see a lot of it's gone. I'm, I'm thin. Why? Because I've been exercising. I've been dieting. And uh, fasting, you know, just eating very little food. I just don't have much of an appetite. I have a little something, you know, in uh, the early evening, and, and I'm good. I, I just don't want all this other stuff. So maybe it's good that things are shut down for a while. People can lose some weight. You know, the, the old the joke has been about the COVID thing. People be in the house, they're gaining weight. You shouldn't be gaining weight. You should be losing weight. You can't go out to all these buffets and restaurants and all that. That's a good thing, maybe. You know, of course, we miss them. But I was praying today, I said, when they open up again, and they will open up soon, I, I'm going to just leave, stay off the bread and the, so many things and anything oily and just attack the soup and the salad bar, you know. <laughs> I have something lean, some lean protein and some, you know, and eat a lot of that because that's good. Now, here's another thing I want to say. The Lord said to me this. I'm telling you several points that the Lord said. Some people don't have the metabolism that others have. You ever see someone that can eat a lot? They seem to always be eating all the time. They're always showing pictures of their food on their social media and how much they eat, and they look like they're still skinny. I thought, yeah, how could you eat that much and stay skinny? You must have a high metabolism rate to burn all that. A lot of, And some people don't have that, so here's the answer to that. You have to adjust yourself accordingly. You have to just stop eating certain things. You'll, you will lose weight. There's a fat burning machine. It has a fat burning cycle on it. I've been on that thing every day or sometimes even twice a day. And man, I'm telling you, my whole midsection is like gone. And some of it's still there. I want to go further. You know what I mean? And I, I want to be skinny. I don't want to be heavy. I don't want to be overweight. I don't want to have high blood sugar, high blood pressure. I feel better. And the one push we all need is to drink a lot more water. We need to drink a lot more water. you got to push yourself. Sometimes it doesn't come so naturally and easy to do that. But this thing about holiness, now there were some consequences to some messes that David got himself into. You see in 2 Samuel 24, the last chapter of uh, the book of 2 Samuel before the book of 1 Kings. 2 Samuel 24, read that. I'm not going to take time to go into it, but read the whole chapter. And there's some consequences to some things. You, you, you think that there's no consequences to anything. And I heard the Lord say that to, to me to say this too. I'm, I'm repeating what heaven has spoken to me today by the Spirit. Because I, I didn't write it down. I just heard it. I captured it in my memory and my spirit. And I'm just bringing it back to you. Solomon. I heard the, Lord, the, the voice of the Lord said this to me before I came on here. I'm repeating what heaven is saying. You're listening to a message from God directly through his servant, his prophet here. Listen to me. Solomon was entreated God and then got so blessed, right? Became the richest man, powered, empowered and favored by heaven. But then he got all these women and it, it, turned, him, it turned his heart away, messed them up. Read what he, how he talks in Proverbs and then read how he talks in Ecclesiastes. 
But Ecclesiastes, the anointing was still flowing because there's a lot of great verses in there. I love some of those power verses in Ecclesiastes. There are many of them. But his state of mind was a mess. It wasn't the money that turned his heart away. Someone says, oh, if you get so rich like that, you know, you know, all that riches and wealth. And No, it, the Bible didn't say it was the money. The money helped him become more great, but it's the women that turned him away. I want to say to the body of Christ, you better stop your half-stepping in the church and thinking God doesn't see you. He sees everything, and he's merciful, yes, and he forgives, yes. But you need to stop this thing called habitual sin. Wow. When did I, when did I preach that? I'm preaching it now. This is great, Lord. I feel the anointing so strong here right now. Father, touch your, your precious son and daughter to give them grace to live right, to live a holy life. Check your mind, you know, from all the carnal thoughts. Check your, your mouth what eats all these carnal foods and too much stuff. And what you say, you know, Jesus even said it's not what always goes into the man that defiles him, but what comes out. There's some things in you that you shouldn't be speaking, you know. Don't speak against other people. Another thing you need, to, here's another thing I heard. You need to forgive everybody. It doesn't matter what they've done to you. Yeah, it's evil. Yeah, it's criminal. Yeah, they're bad. But you can't kill yourself and, and risk God not forgiving you of things because you don't forgive others. Jesus said, you forgive and I'll forgive you. So it doesn't matter what they've done. The most horrific things. Yeah, they're horrible. Yeah, it's like they shouldn't be forgiven, right? You'd think. People that have done such horrifically bad things that have caused so much damage to people, to others. But Jesus said, forgive. Let them go. Could you see someone and like embrace them or would you want to kill them? People that have done you evil. This is a test. So I looked, I, I, was, I was meditating on that and I thought, well, I'm, I'm okay. I really am. I've forgiven Forgive and, forgive and release. I see someone because I am, you know, when you're in the spirit, anointed, it helps you to do so many things. It'll help you forgive. It'll help you fast. It'll help you clean your mind, clean your life, clean your whole itinerary, get more interested in the laws of God and flowing what he wants you to be doing and, and, uh, and stop, you know, all these other things that so easily spoil the vine and get in your way and distract you. It's called The Life of Holiness. Volume 2 here. Little Volume 2. So stop being a screwball and wake up and be responsible and be mature and love God and do what He wants you to do. If you've never received Jesus as your Savior, just say, if you're there listening and you've never received Jesus as your Savior, just say, Lord Jesus, I receive you as my Savior and Lord. Forgive me of all sin. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Take the devil's uh, authority off of me. I give myself to you. I'm saved. I'm born again. I confess that with my mouth. I accept your gift of salvation now. In Jesus' name. And I belong to you now, not the devil in the world. In Jesus' mighty name. Now, if you're a believer, and you know you could be doing better in your walk and in your life, and most people have that issue, not some. I'll tell you that, most. Most people. Not everybody's living like they'd say they are. Come on. Clean yourself up. Because what will happen is holiness attracts heaven. Humility is humbling yourself before God and doing things His way. It attracts heaven. Holiness attracts heaven. Humility attracts heaven. And you'll begin to get more blessed financially. Things that God wants to entrust you with. That's a big one. Trust. The trust factor. Can God trust you? Well, if you live any only kind of filthy way, you, he can't. And he, and he won't. You know, remember the scripture said, uh, if you're not faithful, who will give you the true riches? Jesus said that. It's written in red. If you're not faithful... In what, you know, look, read the context of the scripture. I don't have time. I'm in a real hurry here to deliver this word here and jump off. I just want to be a few minutes with you. But, and I'll continue in this. But um, 
Jesus said, if you're not faithful in another man's, who will give you your own? In other words, you have to express your character in what you're doing and who you're serving and how you're living and all that. But, but if you're not faithful, then who will give you the true riches? Jesus is asking that question, but basically he's saying, not me. Basically he's saying, not me. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to be giving it to you. It's truth. So you got to decide what you want. You want to be a, a, a joke in the kingdom, or you want to be a warrior and a mighty vessel of honor? Which do you want to be? You have to pay the price. Crucify yourself, not physically, <laughs> not really, really, really in reality like that, but in your life, give up certain things. Go on a fast. It's good. You'll feel so much better. Let me tell you where confidence comes from. Confidence comes from integrity. When you know you're right, you really don't care what anyone else thinks. You don't care how any, anyone else's opinion doesn't sway you or affect you because you are right. And when you're right, you're right. When you're correct, you're correct. When you're integrity, you, are, you have integrity and you stand at the top, on the top of the mountain. Do you know what it feels like? To have that life when you have no fear, no, not too much anxiety. You know, a lot of that will go by the Holy Ghost. Anxiety, fear, stress, worry. And then when you make the decision, here's I want to tell you something, a power key. When you make the decision to really walk heavily with God, all those being, things are being subject to people and their isms, schisms, demons, thoughts. Uh, attitudes, you know, uh, effects of things on them and in them, they don't affect you. You're like above it. You crush them because you're on top, because you're on top of the game, because you're living and walking right with God. In Jesus' name, the life of holiness. Holiness unto the Lord, volume two. I have two great books that I've written the Laws of Success and the Benefits of Excellence. I have them in ebook form that anyone that's sowing a seed now, a tithe and offering a donation into the world mission of Thomas Matthew IV and Dominion International to help us in our world mission throughout the nations of the world, uh, you will be receiving these, which are life-changing writings and many more books I'm doing. I look forward to getting many more finished. We're going to be doing a lot more broadcasting, a lot more great things. You'll be seeing that, hearing about it. So the Lord bless you. Fast. Get into it. Cut off some wrong relationships. Cut off some wrong connections, wrong environments. Get yourself in the presence of God. And I'm praying for you, my friend, that this touch of heaven comes upon your life because you've made the right decision to live a holy life and to walk with Jesus in, for real in reality by the spirit of holiness and a life of holiness is great the feeling of the presence of God when you know you're correct again is just so overwhelming and I pray that you have that same feeling that I'm having and I'm loving it I pray it comes upon you in Jesus name make those decisions change your ways do things you need to be doing. Stop doing things you don't need to be doing and get on with God's program and heaven will honor you and pour out the fire of the Holy Ghost on you. I'm, I'm believing for many vessels to be raised up in power in these days. And I want to hear your testimony of breakthrough in business, breakthrough in ministry, breakthrough in the spirit, breakthrough in life, advancement in life. It's all for you, but you have to choose to do the right things and be the right way. In Jesus' name. Thomas Manton IV, I'll talk to you on the next broadcast. Love you much.